especially over the past couple of months, Linux gaming has come a very, very long way. But some parts still aren't perfect, and some parts can still be improved and optimized with some extra additions. So today we're going to talk about six pieces of software that even if you're not going to use every single day, every Linux gamer should know about. So we should all know that Linux gaming is primarily based around Wine. Sure, there is DOSBox, there is emulators and things like that, but for regular games, it's Wine and all of the different forks of Wine. Things like Proton, Proton G, and things like that. And when you're playing a game in Steam, you're probably going to use Proton, and Steam is going to manage all of that stuff for you. But when you're playing a standalone game, let's say you're playing the standalone version of Final Fantasy XIV, you're going to have to go and set up your own Wine prefix. This is basically the way that Wine is configured to make the game think that it's playing on Windows and make it actually work. This is very complex. I, for one, have no idea how to get that game working, but the community does. So instead of doing it myself, I'm going to rely on tools like Lutris and also Bottles. Both of these are tools for managing your wine prefixes to make it really obvious what each of them is actually set up for. This is the one for, I don't know, Microsoft Paint. This is the one for Final Fantasy XIV. This is the one for that game, so on and so forth. With Bottles also including stuff to automatically configure environments that might be better for certain types of applications. But what makes both of these incredibly useful is their community databases of installer scripts. Now, Lutris is a far older project, so it's had far more time to actually build up this database. Right now, Bottles only has a couple of things on here in the App Store section. There is more stuff under the databases section, but even so, there is far, far less than what Lutris has, and sadly, the Lutris scripts are in a slightly different format than the Bottle scripts, so they don't just, like, instantly work in the other application. But in Lutris, basically any game you could ever want to play probably at least has one install script. Now, if the game is a live service game or is still being updated, it's very possible that the script that is available isn't going to work for the latest version. Like, say for example, there's an update to 14, the script might break. But if the game is at all popular, it's likely the script is going to be updated at some point. And having any chance to get the game working, even if the script is kind of old, is better than having no chance whatsoever and managing Wine completely on your own. And now onto the next applications. While there is a lot of games out there that have built-in FPS counters, built-in performance metrics, there is a lot of games out there that don't. So Mango HUD, which you can see in the top left corner here, is an incredible application to go and do this. This is incredibly customizable as well. This is just a fairly basic way of using it. Now, if you want to use this with a standalone application, this is done by running Mango HUD and then the path of the application you want to launch. So let's say you want to launch something like Super Tux Cart. So it'd be whatever the path is to Super Tux Cart, and then it'll be launched with Mango HUD. But most of the time, that's not how you launch a game. Most of the time, it's done through a launcher like, say, Lutris or Steam. So in Steam, the way you activate it is you go into the game settings for whatever game you want to use. Let's say something like Hades. We go to our properties. We go down to where it says launch options, and we add in Mango HUD percent command percent. And then assuming the game doesn't just crash because you opened up Mango HUD, you'll see all of the results here. I have noticed that some games over on the Wayland side will crash with Mango HUD open. I've never seen that happen on Xorg, even when testing the exact same game. So that may be a Wayland issue and not a Mango HUD issue. And then in Lutris, it's basically just as easy. First thing, we go and find the game we want to configure. So let's say in this case, Final Fantasy XIV, we go to configure here. We go over to the system options and then enable FPS counter Mango HUD. And from there, that's all you need to do. And now like over on Steam, it's going to work exactly like you'd expect. But while Mango HUD is very configurable and there's really good documentation over on the GitHub, there is an easier way to do it for a lot of people. And that is by just using an application called G Overlay. This lets you set pretty much every Mango HUD setting that matters, but done so through a graphical interface. Also, it lets you manage VK Basalt for injecting various filters into your games, and also replay sorcery for, you know, getting a game replay. But I personally don't find either of these really that useful. Some other people might, though. Now, on to the next tool. Most Linux distros are great systems for day to day use, they're great for doing your word processing, your browsing, everything else like that. 
and they're great because they're generic, but they are not optimized specifically with gaming in mind. So that's where game mode becomes very, very useful. This is basically a optimization tool for tweaking your CPU governor, your IO priority, your kernel scheduler, your GPU overclocking, and much, much more. In short, it's basically a system tweaking tool. Now, be very, very, very warned. If you touch anything related to your GPU, it is not the fault of the developer when you brick it or you light it on fire. Yes, you can go and overclock, but unless you know what you're doing, do not touch that functionality. In the end, though, game mode is kind of optional, and most of the time, I don't really bother using it. But if you want to use it, it's basically as simple to set up as Mango HUD. For a standalone game, all you do is run game mode run and then pass in the path to the application. If we're doing something on Steam, all we do is go into our properties for the game. And then instead of having Mango HUD here, we would do game mode run instead. And then over on Lutris, what we can do is go into our properties here or our configure, sorry, go into our system options, and then enable feral game mode. And that's all you need to do. But unlike Mango HUD, there's nothing visual to show if it's running, so I'm not going to launch up the games. Next up, we have two very useful tools for helping out Steam. So when you want to play a game, you're going to pick the version of Proton that makes the game basically play the best. Generally, that's going to be a version of Valve's Proton, let's say, you know, 6.3-8. But sometimes you're going to want to use a version of Proton GE. This is a custom version of Proton, including some extra modifications that some games actually require. Now installing these versions isn't difficult, but it requires you going over to the GitHub, downloading the archive, and then sticking into the location that it needs to be stuck in. But there's a much easier method, the first one being ProtonUp. This is a command line tool for downloading whichever version of Proton GE you want to download. So if I go and do ProtonUp, and then it releases, I can see every single version which is currently available. If I just go and run ProtonUp by itself, it's going to try to download the most recent version, or I can go and run ProtonUp-T and then pass in whichever version I want to download. Let's say this one right here. If we go and pass that tag in right there, it's going to try to download 7-3. There we go. But maybe you don't like doing stuff in the terminal, and that's totally fine. In which case, you can do the exact same thing in Proton Up QT. We can go and add a new version here, select whichever version I want to download, and then go and install the version, and you're pretty much good to go then. The QT version also supports adding in other compatibility tools as well, but this is the main thing that I use it for. All of those tools were tools that I personally use, but I also want to give one honorable mention, that being to GameHub. This is basically an all-in-one game library categorization tool sort of thing. Basically, rather than having all of these different game launches, this brings all your games into one location, along with having support for things like Steam achievements, so you still get access to those as well. Plus, it has a tagging system to sort out your games, and it has a really, really sleek interface. I don't use it myself because the vast majority of my games are inside of Steam, and I have one or two games outside of Steam, so for me, not that important. But if you use all of these different launches, I could see it being useful. Now, this was just my personal list, and maybe yours differs. In which case, I would love to know in the comment section down below, what applications do you use? What applications do you think that more people need to know about? I would love to know. So if you like this video, I'm going to go and like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, subscribe, Stomach Barrow Pay, linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over Tea available basically anywhere. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robinson Plays. That's going to be it for me, and I'm out.